Hey everyone, back with my next installment of my competitive team building guide. Last time we talked about the roles that your Pokemon can serve on your team, which was a slightly boring topic to start on. I apologize, but I needed to lay that groundwork for today's video on the different teams in Pokemon. Now there are of course millions upon millions of possible team combinations, but generally speaking in competitive play, they often follow a set framework. I often like to think of it as this sliding scale proceeding from stall all the way to offense and hyper offense. The more defensive pieces you have, the closer you're gonna be to this side of the scale. And the more offensive pieces you have, the closer you'll be to this side. My goal today is to break down these separate teams to give you a good idea of what different archetypes exist out there before you start with making your own. The first entry on our list is going to be stall. This is the farthest you can go to the defensive side of the spectrum. So much so that when building a stall team, you really don't need to be worrying about any of the offensive roles we talked about in my last video. Wall breakers or sweepers are not important to you because your objective in stall isn't to win by knocking your opponent out with attacks. Instead, you want to slowly and steadily control the hazards on the field and wear down your opponents with status and weaker attacks, all until their team folds under the residual damage. As the name implies, this is a much slower paced style of play than most other Pokemon teams. Not only does this type of team require a much more patient player, but it also requires very careful play as their opponent. Generally speaking, most players get pretty frustrated playing against Stall, and in my opinion this is mainly because it forces your opponent to slow down too, which most ladder players aren't really mentally prepared to do. To look into the roles you want on your Stall team, arguably the most important facet is going to be defensive synergy. You're probably going to want to have a team full of like nothing but walls really. Uh, you can make the case that some of these Pokemon are going to be defensive pivots instead of walls but that's really just tomato tomato. Uh, with all these defensive Pokemon on your team, you need to make sure that you have a defensive answer to all the top threats in the game, which requires really great synergy between your Pokemon and how they work. This can be best described in my future uh, offensive and defensive course video, which is going to come out very soon, but keep an eye on the viability threads of your meta for the top offensive Pokemon to watch out for, and make sure you have Pokemon with the tools to stop them in return. Not only do stall teams need defensive synergy, but they also need as much utility as they can muster. Hazard control is a must, and lesser used hazards like spikes and toxic spikes become a massive part of your game plan as well. Uh, this means that not only do you need to have multiple hazard setters, but also as much hazard control as you can muster, whether that's something like a magic bounce user, or a defogger, or a rapid spinner, etc. Just want to have as many of these roles covered in your stall team as possible. Other pieces of utility like status, phasing, and stall breaking, ironically, uh, are also fantastic inclusions onto this playstyle. But the final aspect of stall that I want to touch upon is its longevity. Even though I just uploaded it, I already kind of regret not including recovery on my list of utility roles in my last video. But it's important that you still understand how important this is on your slower defensive oriented teams. You're trying to play the long game here, you're going to be absorbing a lot of hits, so it's important that most, if not all of your Pokemon, have means to recover health as the turns wear on. This is why Pokemon with Regenerator or Wish Passing are so handy in this tier, as they offer a way to recover health, beyond just like waiting 10 turns for leftover recovery or mashing the Roost button. But hey, let's keep moving, let's keep going along our scale here. Uh, next we have Balance. Uh, as its name implies, the key to Balance is equal weight to offensive pieces on your team as the defensive pieces. A pretty classic example of this can be found in popular Sword and Shield team shells where you have defensive stalwarts, like a special defensive Clefable and physically defensive Corv, and let's say a Stealth Rocker Seismitoad for the Water Absorb, and a Rotom Heat to wall the first two that I mentioned. Next for those offensive pieces, let's say we have a Leftovers, Hex Dragapult, and a Guts Conkildur. This team actually ends up being pretty balanced, once again fitting the name. For pure offense, you have your Conkildur and your Dragapult. For pure defense, you have your Corviknight and Clefable. And then with both offensive and defensive utility, maybe leaning towards the latter, uh, you've got Seismitoad and Rotom Heat. The flexibility of balanced teams like this is what really makes it shine. Your defensive pieces can be used to play the long game versus stall, or help weather the storm against strong offensive Pokemon. Meanwhile, your own offensive Pokemon can be used to trade blows against other offense players and help you break through some walls against stall. Right now in Gen 8 Overused, Clefable's Wish Teleport is so, so good right now, and as a result, it's led to a lot of balanced teams. This is because you can use the extra uh, recovery that this wish provides to add a lot of longevity to your other Pokemon like Rotom Heat or Seismitoad like we used in our example, but other Pokemon like that, you know, what have you. And in terms of roles to include, you're of course gonna want one to two hazard setters in addition to one to two hazard removers. Defensive synergy is just as important here as with Stall, so you need to make sure that your core can handle most threats. But unlike Stall, you do need these offensive pieces as well. Usually one form of speed control for the general utility of revenge killing or threatening out offensive Pokemon, and usually one sort of wall breaker, threaten kills against anything it swaps in against, and to help you make some dents in the walls of an enemy team stall, for example. Sweepers can of course be used here too, but you need to be a bit more careful with them and wait for the right opportunity to attempt to sweep. You can't just throw them out there. Now, as we start to move along our list here, we're not gonna be at offense quite yet, but instead at bulky offense. 
These names are pretty descriptive, so once again, as the name implies, this is a team that puts more weight on its offensive pieces, but doesn't want to be as frail as more aggressive forms of offense. That's where the bulk comes in. It's a little bit hard to describe, because I'd say it's right in between the middle of like offense and slower play styles, so this objective isn't quite as clearly defined. But generally speaking, you want at least three or four offensive Pokemon on your team. But not just like frailer Pokemon, like an extra drill or Infernerate per se, but like Pokemon that have their own defensive utility, like a Tyranitar does, a Conkleder, Garchomp, Aegislash, etc. Those type of bulkier Pokemon still have tons of attacking prowess. Being further along the spectrum than others, you're gonna want many, if any, purely defensive pieces on your team. Instead, you're gonna want a team chocked full of offensive sweepers and wall breakers, and at least some speed control. But you do still need to include the obvious pieces of utility, like hazard setting and hazard control, uh, in addition to whatever other pieces you're looking for and you can find room for, like status, uh, maybe screens, stall breaking, all this usually comes in handy. And I mean, this playstyle is a little bit tricky to describe, like I said, but if I had to sum it up, I would call it the playstyle of smart switches and relying on your offensive pressure. If you look at this Tyranitar set, it's not defensive enough to find a home on stall. It's not offensive enough to find a home on, like, hyper offense. I mean, maybe it's a wall breaker, but I don't know. It's pretty much just a big, bulky Pokemon that can take some hits and dish out its own. Despite that lack of defensive utility I mentioned, there's still gonna be a ton of opportunities to switch this thing in on the opponent's attacks, and then threaten them out in kind. And that's what most of your Pokemon and bulky offense are gonna be like. If nothing else, just remember that bulky offense can take a bunch of hits before folding, but doesn't have nearly the same longevity as stall or balance. So the impetus is on them to break through the opponent when facing a more defensive playstyle. And next up here, we finally have offense. And this one's gonna be very strictly described actually because there's so many variants. Just off the top of my head, there's like weather teams, uh, trick room teams, there's even bird spam teams, there's also drag mag, gravity teams, uh, and very prominently there's hyper offense, which I actually broke down in full on this video, so I won't be discussing it here. But point being, offense comes in a lot of different flavors. This is because offense teams cannot last for these long 100 turn games. They need to get in, break some walls, and start knocking out Pokemon to be successful. Theming an offensive team around some sort of attribute like rain or gravity or trick room, whatever, it's not just for fun, but also gives all of your pieces some synergy and lets them all reap the benefits of a system that your opponent cannot. So now that we're into offense, you are of course going to want some wall breakers, you're going to want some sweepers, and at least one form of speed control. I'd say you actually can have a defensive Pokemon or two on here still, usually not like all offensive pieces like a hyper offense team would have for example. Uh, speaking of examples, a good one that would fit this role of just one sort of defensive wall on your team would be Ferrothorn. It's a staple on a lot of rain teams because it's fire weakness is stunted, but also it offers some protection against enemy water attackers, uh, it's a good mixed wall, lets you get like you know a bit of protection against both sides of the spectrum there, plus it's such a great hazard setter of course. And as far as utility rules on an offense team goes, uh, like I said a couple of times now, you're gonna want as much of this as you can possibly afford to fit on your team. Uh, things like screen setters and stall breakers are always gonna come in handy. While hazard setters are important here as ever, this is the first team that I'm gonna say hazard removal isn't like strictly needed for. It's never a bad idea to include, it can really hurt you if you don't have it in certain matchups actually, but there is a fair argument to be made that the offensive pieces that you need to trade in order to fit hazard removal onto this team might not be worth it. The key to offense is keeping up pressure with smart switches, smart pivots, uh, controlling your own sacks, etc. so your opponent doesn't get the chance to catch their breath. It's not as all out as hyper offense where you kind of shoot your shot, but if your opponent is still alive afterwards, you're screwed, but it is still very high tempo. It can even be described as like trading pieces with your opponent until you're in the most favorable end game possible because it's just that high tempo with the knockouts. In terms of the other specific styles of offense, I mean, besides weather, which I do have a mini series planned for, I'm not going to get into that right now because I, I can do a whole video on any of these things. But if you want to see it like specifically, so like something like gravity broken down, be sure to let me know in the comments or my Discord and uh, I'll throw it on the list of topics to consider. But hey, that's going to do it for us today. Uh, I'm glad we got to establish this basic groundwork of different Pokemon teams and the roles that are used to fill them because that means next time we can finally get into offensive and defensive cores. After that, we'll have all the tools and knowledge we need to start building our own teams and taking the ladder by storm. So stay tuned for those. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, clicking that subscribe button or like button are a huge help. Uh, that's me done. Thanks again. See you next time.